All right, so today we're hiking up above Soledad Canyon, up to a mine that I went to a few years ago called the Iron Blossom Mine. And they were mining titanium up here back in the late 1920s. So still hiking up the road, got a ways to go. Forget um, how much elevation gain there is on this hike. It's probably a little over a thousand feet. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, so this road we're on was uh, originally built maybe late 1927 or maybe early 1928. Um, those are actually the two years that the mine operated. But during the first year, they hauled most of the ore down using burrow um, trains or pack trains down to a solid canyon into an ore bin. And then later they built this road up here. So I'm taking a break to enjoy the view and you can see off in the distance the three sisters, those uh, sandstone or conglomerate outcroppings. Sounds like there's a train coming through the canyon too. Got a good view of the Santa Clarita Valley here. See uh, Fraser Mountain over there. It's got a bit of snow on it. That uh, prominent one is Cobblestone Mountain. It's not the tallest in the area, but it looks like it is. We've got a uh, Cruzan Mesa, or Mystery Mesa, as it's also called, in the middle there. Do a lot of uh, movie filming up there. It's a long way uh, up, that's for sure. So way in the background, that's Mount Gleason, the one with the trees on top. And right up here we have Magic Mountain, where those radio towers are. And there actually used to be a rocket engine testing facility up here. And I think they tested the engines for the uh, lunar module for the Apollo program up here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we finally made it up to the mine site. You can see we have a large uh, open cut right there where they removed some of the uh, titanium ore. And I want to point out some of the geology of this deposit. So the ore, which is actually called titaniferous magnetite, formed along the contacts between a northrosite, which is this white rock, and uh, gabbro and diorite, which is this darker rock. Um, they're two intrusive bodies of uh, igneous rock, and uh, for whatever reason, these pods of magnetite ore form along the contacts. And you can see there's uh, several road cuts up here along the contact where they're probably um, prospecting for pods of ore. So you can see there's some twisted up rail here sticking out of the ground and I'm right below where that large open cut is. So there may have actually also been an adit running in here although I'm not uh, too sure about that. Yeah, there must have been a large lens of ore that they just completely took away. So I found some good pieces of ore here. As I said earlier, this is called titaniferous magnetite, also known as uh, titanomagnetite or magnetite ilmenite. Um, because it's magnetite, 
which is an ore of iron that contains uh, an impurity mineral known as ilmenite, and that is a iron and titanium oxide. And that is the source of titanium in this uh, rock. Right here there seems to be a stockpile of crushed magnetite. It is said in the uh, mining reports that this mine had a jaw crusher. I'm not sure if it was up here or um, down at the ore bin in Solidad Canyon. Yeah, this magnetite is very, very beautiful stuff. Now you can see there's these uh, threaded rods sticking out of the ground here, um, right next to this pile of crushed rock. So I'm thinking there may have actually been an ore bin right here, and it burned away in one of the many fires in this area. Okay, so here we have the lower adit here at the Iron Blossom Mine. And it's fairly interesting in there. So I'll go get my uh, lights out and we'll head on in. Okay, here's the view just inside the portal. And you can tell by the shape of it here that it looks to be hand dug. They did not blast uh, at least the uh, first 15 feet or so. And we have two nails on the ribs of the attic here. Anyways, you can tell up ahead there's quite a bit of collapse. Um, it appears we're in the uh, Gabbro or diorite right now. It's definitely pretty soft. Got a lot of uh, Looks like mica in the rock there. That's definitely not the strongest stuff. So apparently they intersected three lenses of ore in here. I'm not sure how much they pulled out of the adit versus how much they got from uh, the surface cuts, but apparently they produced 10,000 tons of ore from this mine. It was the uh, largest titanium mine in the uh, San Gabriel Mountains. The next largest one only produced about 2,000 tons. And you can see we have some rail here. And that's what I like about this mine, because uh, not many mines in the San Gabriel Mountains have rail in them. Well, especially the western half of the San Gabriel Mountains, um, as well as the uh, Solid Canyon Acton area. So. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see that. Got a drift here going off to the left. Um, looks like they were using it as storage based off of that piece of wood in there. They may have had a shelf. All right, continuing on. You can see where the rock is slabbed off from the back. Definitely very warm in here. And it got even warmer once I stepped up onto this pile. Pretty humid too.
see this uh, hanging wall for some kind of fault or fracture. Moth in here. And here we actually come to a pretty clean section where there's almost no collapse and get a pretty good look at the rail. On the left there's a pipe probably for compressed air, maybe water. You can see how humid it is in here. The rail is just uh, flaking off rust. I know it's not a very impressive mine for California, but for this part of California, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you can uh, feel the temperatures rising and the humidity is going up every step you take almost. And we're approaching uh, the end of the line, fortunately. Got some stuff. I guess those are roots coming down from the ceiling. I mean, this rock is fractured enough that I, I definitely believe it. Unless it's some kind of mold. Not so sure. Another spot where the rail pokes out. And yeah, unfortunately this is a uh, the end of the road here. It is severely collapsed and I believe I have poked up over there and yeah there's no way over the other side. Um, I imagine that this right here was the first lens of ore they intersected and they may have stoked it out a bit and the rock was probably just weak in this area. You can see actually uh, some like fault gouge or uh, slicken sides as they call it here where you can see the fault has moved along this face grinding into like this clay so I can definitely see why uh, it's collapsed you can see there's another plane right there all right heading back out yeah, this mine originally went back 300 feet. Um, definitely doesn't go back that far anymore. We probably only made it 150 or so. And there's the light from the portal. All right, heading back now. It's getting pretty dark. Yeah, we started pretty late, but that's okay. We're prepared for it. Anyways, I wanted to show you some more of this titaniferous magnetite. It's very pretty looking. And for all you gold prospectors, um, this is what makes up black sand. You can actually see a good amount of it right in here. So this is what's clogging up your 
sluice boxes. And yeah, it's very prevalent in the western San Gabriels here. I mean, pretty much all over California too. And yeah, we're hiking back through the brush. This is gonna be our life for the next hour or so. We get down 